the Zig still removed every single time away from Bishu. The Rise banned from Yuzuki. I am not surprised by the Jax now removed from Inox is a great choice. And I want to see if C9T keeps the Nocturne ban or if they say, you know what, don't play Pantheon. Uh, I definitely ban out uh, Nocturne over Pantheon. Let's see what it is. And the adaptation for EG, it was Nocturne, okay. yeah. They banned the Soraka and first picked Morgana for themselves here. So it's uh, they've been afraid of Glebe's Morgana the entire time. Banning it game one and two, first picking it in game three. Heavy priority. Yeah, we'll see, especially if that ends up as a two versus two lane. Uh, Morgana binding can make or break a two versus two lane, especially if you have a uh, strong AD carry to follow up with it. That's why they didn't want Glebe to get that. Altec could easily take over a lane if you land a couple of those in a row. Uh, so this one, they actually leave up a lot on the board by first picking that Morg. Well, Yuzuki's going to get the Aurelia again this time. He had a reasonable impact in game one for the losing team, had a couple of flanking kills. He snuck into the back line a few times, had a pretty all right game. This time, no Jax to stand in his way. That could work very well. And Kez, time and again, early picking Evelyn, making sure he gets that champion. Yeah, he's really, really focusing on that Ev. Let's see if he has a, a poor early game once again. I think he did much better second time around uh, working around Snoopy's game plan. So maybe he has figured out the uh, predictable routes early game for Snoopy. If you can ever get into that situation, then uh, it helps out a lot because even though EG got wards down in Evelyn's camps, they still were not able to contain her. That's true. It was a extremely well-played uh, game right there by Kaz. Now, once again, Lee Sin is getting picked up, presumably for Inox in the top lane. And he actually, he talked to me after the game. And he said, you know, I wanted to play Lee Sin because my first name spelled backwards is No Sight. Yeah, his name in real life. Tyson. Yeah. N-O-S-Y-T. And I was like, damn, that is so good. I'm going to use it next game on cast. And I gave him credit for it, but you there you go. You the gun there, freak. <laughs> no, I didn't. Just tell it Jeb Select. It's fine. Part of the game. Bishu right. grabbing the uh, Lulu there, the Corky coming through as well. Gotta say C19, not changing much. No, if we don't get our heals, then we're gonna take shields instead. So Lulu, very similar here as far as uh, the team fights are concerned. Gonna be a utility mid laner once again for Cloud9 Tempest. It seems like that's the direction that Bishu has gone. And he's not even going back to that Nidalee that he's been known for. They do not favor the poke comps in the current meta. Much rather go with you know, the sustaining, team fight oriented brawl comps. I think there's a chance Bishu goes Yasuo here. Just because I've seen like Lulu with strong engagers work so well with Yasuo, putting that champion on support. Yeah. Um, I, it's, a, it's a random blind guess, but I feel like you're fighting in Nidalee. I think it's a good matchup for Yasuo. You get to you get to farm the lane out, and you have great engage. Or Twisted Fate, also Ooh. pretty good pick into Nidalee. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the few matchups where you do not feel threatened as Twisted Fate early on, and with the te uh, objective focus of EG, Twisted Fate could be just the thing to tip that back in Cloud 9s favor, uh, being able to cover large distances. Well, it's not going to be the case. It's... Nope, more shields. Nope, it's more shields. It's going to be the. Uh... The heal train with basically buffing up the Aurelia. Gonna stack that up, try to get get through the poke composition there. Morgana Nidalee in there. Uh, Lee Sin for disengage as well. It's gonna be pretty easy for EG to set up a siege. Like, look at this team. It is so good at sitting in the back lines and firing off shots. And once again, it's gonna be very hard for EG to itemize against this Cloud9 team. They've got Aurelia with true damage. They've got uh, Corky with split damage and true damage of his own. And then again, hybrid Evelyn. So there's no single path that you can go for, even if you're only facing one or two members. It's true. It's going to be a risk for EG to itemize around. There's also enough magic damage to break black shields easily. Occasionally, you see Morgana against all AD teams. You're like, you can't be CZ for five seconds. And that's always a fun thing. Of course, not the case here. That's yeah. something I always want to check. And there's not even really a, a high impact physical damage CC, which is really where Black Shield shines. Yeah. So mostly this Morgana, um, just gonna have an impact with the bindings, picking people off. And we'll see how good Krepo was with it. Now we're about to get ourselves into the game, so get your tweeting fingers ready, and let us know who you think's gonna prevail. Tweet your picks to at LOEsports, and use that hashtag EGWIN or C9TWIN, depending on who you want to win. Yeah, I think we should do hashtag KobeWIN, just if you want yes. to think. Me versus Freak? Oh man, no. Not uh -huh. after the games. Okay. Whoever you thought casted better during the series, 
It was Kobe. Just spoiler alert, he wins the vote anyway, but don't worry about it. Uh, right, so here we go. EG, poke comp, right? New look for them. They've trashed the role strategy. They apparently forfeited the, uh, the idea of going for the BO3 on strats. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we're going to first pick the Morgana. We'll grab Nidalee in the rotation, and it's like, all right, let's play the Siege situation, let's get the poke in there. So it's a lot on Pobelter. Yeah, a lo well, a lot of their game relies on these skill shots landing. I mean, not only do they have Morgana in Nidalee, but they also have this Elise. So they really have to land these when they're sieging up, or else they will not be able to pull this team up. Actually, even everybody, Lee Sin as yep. well. Like, this is a completely skill-based team for EG. We'll see how true their aim is this game. Let's see if they can find it. Cloud and Tempest, ooh, different level one. They defensively awarded their red buff. And they go into the bottom side once more. Ooh. But it's the exact same trade. There's a <laughs> in the start. The only thing is that they both make the same switch this game, and we come out with the same result. But the interesting thing is, it is C9T looking to find the two on two, and they get outguessed by EG. Yeah, well, those mind games. And again, not starting with a ward here for, uh, for evil geniuses. I just want to point out that the mind games have been won by the evil geniuses. I would be ashamed of their tag if they weren't. Only this game, though. Well, I mean, they got first blood in game two. I don't know. The, the opening situation for the lanes have always been two on one. Uh-oh, recalls. Maybe it's not the case. We'll see. Okay. It's not important. It's just, it's just Pobots are going back. Never mind. Two on one lanes is going to be here. It is, by the way, mid Lulu support karma. They always could have gone either way, but that's the situation here. Bishu is going to be 1v1ing Pobelter. Lulu versus Nidalee. We've seen this matchup a lot in the LCS. Pobelter's got to be aware of this matchup pretty well. And C19 go for the four man invade. You really never saw a single person. Like, EG, if they like randomly five man defend one of their buffs, 50% mm -hmm. chance they just find C19. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's so risky. And not a lot of the teams are willing to take that risk. Even though there's a pretty big payoff, there is a lot of risk involved. Once again, though, double jungles from both sides, probably. They've seen that the duo from EG went up top. And they're going to have to revert to the early tower pushes. All right, well, Larry White goes down. And Evil Geniuses are going to take down the Wolf Camp and rejoin their team. They're on the interesting side of the map, though. They're actually on the back side. So it'll take a little bit more time to get to that turret. Shouldn't mean too much. Bishu playing very aggressively directly behind his melee minion line. It's because this uh, did shake out as the four-man splitting on both sides, it will actually benefit Lulu pretty early here. And we'll see how heavily he can punish this Nidalee and how quickly Cloud9 can actually rotate mid. If they clear the bottom turrets and then rotate everybody up mid, Nidalee cannot do anything to an ADN support, especially a Corky and Karma heading up to a mid lane that early in the game. So before Nidalee's level six, and even after level six, she would have a hard time uh, dealing with Lulu, uh, Corky, and Karma. So we'll see how quickly Cloud9 actually can rotate up there, because that would be uh, good move for them. Oh, here we go. Cloud and Tempest going to start off the second turret. They are there before Evil Geniuses, but there's plenty of minions there to make this one work anyway. I do want to see if a team can get Dragon off these level 1, level 2 trades right here. Mm -hmm. Looks like early recalls for Kez and Yuzuki. Cloud and Tempest just going to deny as many minions as possible here and just play for that second tier turret. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the early Dragon. Um, that would be very, very risky for them. Much rather rotate over to the uh, the open lane there. So yeah, they they get enough damage from the turret to ensure that the lane's pushing back towards them. Uh, both teams actually doing this. So in both cases, there will be no freeze, and it will be pushing out towards. Snoopy coming in for the gank here, though. Yuzuki's gonna get stunned point blank. Flash the way Snoopy gets the Q down, though. 100 health left in Yuzuki. One shot, the flash auto, and Yellow Pete claims first blood. Tricky. They've fallen into a pattern here, and he expected everyone to already be leaving to go defend elsewhere. Nice loop around there from Snoopy. And we talked about how he snowballs when he gets an early gank. If it's successful, turns out EG do get the good start this time around. And there was no counter gank from Kez. 
Absolutely well played by the EG lineup now. 600 gold lead, earned it. Oh, the binding across the wall. BG takes a javelin too. Well aimed by both members of EG there. And just sneaking it right around the minions in this case. 35 to 20 though, so far, when they were left to their own devices in the mid lane. Bishu did a pretty good job punishing Pope Belter for the matchup. And now everything does shake out. This is an interesting time on the map because there was an influx of gold with all the turrets going down, but nobody's had time to place wards. So it's really a scramble of supports running around the map trying to get vision coverage up after all these turrets have gone down and they just got back to base and they just were able to purchase the wards. And it's worth pointing out actually that Glee managed to afford his Spell Thief's Edge plus the Sight Stone. Mm -hmm. Not the case here for Crepo. So Crepo's running around buying his first round of wards. Ooh, nice try. So that puts him even farther back. It's like a small gold deficit you don't see in the scoreboard for EG. He did get a pink ward, though, um, yeah. for the Evelyn. So they can defensively ward, and they did get in position for the giant wave. Crepo looks for a binding. Lands it, actually, I believe, on the Glee, but guy's going to be safe. Kez backing off. Snoopy. There's, they're hunting him, and he barely barely misses it. Okay, he knew Kes was there, no big deal. Spots him with the spider. Another bind lands. Krepo's been having a great time landing these bindings. And because of the timing of the backs there, Pete actually comes to the lane after the kill, the first blood money, getting a PF sword. So a huge lead for Pete. He's got, wow. yeah, you can see it there in the exchanges. BF sword. Two Vamp Scepter is a giant lead. Yeah. That first blood really, really hurt Altec and uh, Cloud9 Tempest. And it's more than just the first blood, actually, because he would, it was actually given more minions during the like 4v0 push. Pete's actually up 600 gold over Altec, just in general. There's an extra 200 gold there, not accounted for with the kill. That he's gotten from minions here. So a lot has gone well for EG in the early game. We'll see if they can snowball it. I believe both teams also gave all the local gold of the turret to their AD carry. Hmm, yeah. Yellow Pete definitely got it, and I'm pretty sure Altec got it as well. Interesting. He might have shared on the second tier turret, but that's like a 50 gold difference if you share versus get local, so it's not too bad. Looks like blue buff going to be started out by Snoopy. Seven minutes in, only level four on him. The Pobalter will be here to help make sure this one goes down. Have a nice shiny blue buff there on Italy. Kez spots one of these first early pink wards. We'll clear that by himself. Oh, he's heading for another one here too. Inox has a pink ward, and he just saw Evelyn clear that other one, so he should believe that Kez is on his way down. Yeah. Kez cleaning up here. Two pink good. wards down. He's taking that Eve tax. 260 gold swing right there. 100 for the ward, 30 for killing it. He's going to recall right away in this brush. Now, the thing is, Inox won't know. Oh, he's going to face check it and make sure. Yep, okay, Eve's gone. She pieced out. He knows he's safe. Pobelt are much happier now. Blue buff and level 6 already attained. Now he can start having his way in the mid lane. Rotate down here from Yellow Pete and Krepo from the top lane as well. Bonding this one won't land, but just early wave clear. Looks like Glebe taking some damage, but... Now the, sur the, the turret siege. We'll see what happens to this one. Still just that one kill. It's just making the leads otherwise. Uh, about 600, 700 gold for Evil Genius. He's pushing out towards the bottom lane. Yuzuki is in this 1v2. He's going to be safe though. But EG, they are pressuring turrets because C9T, they're just freezing the top lane. Whereas EG's pushing. Yeah, EG, they need to take advantage of that freeze top lane. They've got an extra man on the field basically with all tech up top. So they have to make something happen and they're taking the bottom turret for it. Kez passes through another pink ward, and taking this pink ward, he could actually bait. Pompa Belter gets turned into a sheep, and he backs on out. He should dodge the javelin, he's gonna be safe on Lulu, but here we go. Evil Genius is still pushing the bottom side with four champions here. Glebe, Yazuki, Kez are around to defend, but they're not really stopping EG. This this. Minion lane farm by Altec is about to cost them two turrets. And Bishu, without his blue buff, is actually oh. going to all in Pobelter. Ulti ignite, big burst. Pobelter flashes, and a minion takes the javelin for the team. One summon to lead. Yuzuki takes big damage, though. This turret's down to one third. EG. I got to say, I think they're doing much better right now. So the thing is, Altec built up pretty good wave up top. And even though EG got the turret first down bottom, Altec is still going to be able to take down the one up top. And the man that they missed 
will actually not hurt them that much. Just the blue buff stolen away. Okay, so oh no! Also the dragon! Oh man, yeah, the dragon is going to be well. here. This is really good. Evil Genius is now all five members here to make this happen. Yep, they trade out of turrets, but plus blue buff, plus dragon. The only thing going to C19's way is the fact they got a lot of solo lane farm onto Altec. The question is, is that going to be enough? The Corky has got 2100 gold in inventory. That's not enough yet for BT. Yeah, it's not going to help him out that much. With the blue buff being stolen away again, and the dragon taken, EG will also have the timer for the second dragon. Important for them. So mid lane, now the target of the siege. EG starting early. The 2 and one swap took down the lanes pretty early on, letting EG group up before you normally would in a 2 on 2 situation. Wave clear, though, still quite good from this Altec Corky. That is helping the team a lot in these defensive situations. There's like, honestly, ridiculously good wave clear from Cloud9 Tempest. Glitter Lances, Phosphorus Bombs, Karma's Q. Soul Flame is the empowered version. Inner Flame, that's the one. Uh, Cookshot would be disappointed in me. Let's see how well they can actually move because since EG are pressing on the lanes, they actually need more vision to back up these moves. And it's up to Cloud9 Tempest here. They've got some pretty good defensive wards. Can they pick anybody off? They really need to take advantage, use this uh, Evelyn invisibility to their advantage. Because EG are splitting up, trying to shove two lanes at once. And Cloud9 need to make up their mind. Which one do they want to attack? EG converge, though. Kez about to get walked on top of Ulti comes in. Big jump onto Snoopy. He's got nowhere to go. He flashes the chase from Kez. Can't get him. Oh, He's going to be the escape. Oh. I can't believe it. Ulti does not get the damage he needs. Yuzuki can't follow up either. EG get away. Snoopy gets out with his life. Wow. So much burned there. The heals coming in huge. Or evil geniuses. And the mid lane turret goes down as a result afterwards. Evil geniuses. 1400 gold lead. Once again, a wave stuck in underneath the turret there that someone on C9T is desperately trying to farm. Whew. Super close. Uh, yeah, Aurelia now the one that they're trying to feed money into, though. It would be great to get an early Triforce on her for Cloud9 Tempest because uh, they want to be able to use a lot of their shields on the on the front line, not have to use them defensively on Altec. They want to be able to use them on Aurelia, have Aurelia be the one uh, aggressing, getting in there, because they want that hard engage on the Nidalee. Ha! Kobe win! I see that tweet. Whatever. You suck, freak. Next one's going to be mine. <laughs> I believe in you, production crew. The next one better say freak win. Uh, yeah. This, this, I mean, the red side of Cloud9 Tempest looks like the battlefield here. Everybody's dumping all their wards into this quadrant of the map. And uh, it almost paid off for Cloud9 Tempest there mm -hmm. with the ambush. So we'll have to see how hesitant EG are to go back to that side. They don't seem too hesitant, but Welter just stole away a big wraith. And he's like, yeah, this jungle's still mine. Well, he's been getting both blue buffs. So he gets. C9T's blue buff, and when that runs out, he gets their own blue buff, so they have constant mid-game Nidalee Spears, which are where she's really, really potent right now, because nobody has magic resist. So Pabelter is really just uh, having a great time so far, just continually getting to throw out Spears. Flank well, coming in from Kez. Engage Kez, two-man ulti, the knockup as well from Lulu. Will it be enough? Krepper with the ulti and the binding might keep him safe. Teleport's coming in, though. From the top laner, Inox will join the fight. Bishu taken low. Snoopy finds a stun. Kez goes down. One for zero. Yuzuki kicked back, but he's on top of Krepper. Oh! The Q comes out and he gets the kill. Jumps to a minion. And here comes the escape. They're going to let him go. The Walter backs out, but it's two for one to EG. They can keep pushing. Also, they have a blue buff in Italy. Their sustain is ridiculous right now. They can easily siege up. It'll probably be an objective win for them. Even though Krepo did happen to go down because Inox kicked an Aurelia right into his face. He couldn't see that he was behind him. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> wow, so they don't uh, they don't want to continue pushing actually. That wave play you talked about, so much AoE magic damage here from Cloud9. Mm -hmm. Deterring EG. I also want to point out, like as much as we talk about Altec split pushing and getting a whole bunch of solo farm. 
Yuzuki is getting a very similar amount right there. He's the guy who cleaned up in the bottom lane. Right? He, he's the one getting farm when they need all tech for wave clear duties, and he kind of shares that with everyone yeah, else. So. Exactly. All right, so here's the pick, and they do the combo once again. Kez gets the slow into the Lulu knockup. However, they're not able to hang on to anybody, and it's a great teleport. It actually causes everyone on C9 to retreat. Another spear landing, and then Snoop A coming in from the side with the cocoon is able to land a, another kill for them. Two for one trade is all that happens from it, though. Still a decently close game. And they secure their first blue buff for Bishu. He's very happy. All right, well, Bishu just on Athene's boots one and a blue buff versus the Athene sword shoes there. That helps the Belter a little bit more, though. Both these guys wearing blues for now. Oof, big javelin drops Kez well below half. And you're seeing how difficult it is for C19 to hold on to these sieges. Another wave comes in and. Looks like Evil Genius has just outnumbered them enough. Bijou trying to wave clear with Altec. Yeah, he needs to start shielding some of these uh, spears here because a lot of them are landing. There's a bunch of traps on the ground as well. Snoopy clears away a pink ward. Double Glitter Lance comes down, but the minions still falling away so rapidly. EG do not want to stop this one at all. Man, Pobelter is giving them so much control. Just by landing all these spears, he's continually keeping Cloud9 down, not letting Cloud9 go on the offensive there. Always trying to regenerate, and just because of all these spears that are landing, all this basically free damage that they're getting, they are awarded the position on Dragon. Cloud9 do not have a chance to react. Yeah, Evil Geniuses quickly get down there, very well played by them. Three and a half thousand gold, but EG ahead. Little Lance doesn't even matter to Bo Alter, he's got mana regen, no big deal for him. And Ox returning to the split push as well. Mm. So no teleports up for either side laner, but Inox with Hydra pushes really, really quickly. So I want to see then when C19 can get themselves into a fight more successfully, because right now the EG disengage has worked time and again. The trap on Elise, he got away. The, the mid lane team fight where we had the teleports come in, still a two for one Evil Genius' favor. These battles, time and again, EG is getting away with their long-range team. Yeah, really what Cloud9 need to do is focus. When they have Kez go in, they need to have Yuzuki ready to jump with him. They need both of those guys getting to the back line because just the slow and the knockup from Lulu, we saw EG get away from it already. They need Aurelia there as well at the same time. If they can use that Karma speed boost, then they can continue to chase. All they need is the first step. Let's see what else these guys can find. Bloodthirster done for both AD carries. Looks like the beginnings of Triforce started for Altec, but he is behind Yellow Pete just a little bit in this one. Javelin hits Gleeb. Wow! Massive damage comes through. Once again, the wave clear, but this turret now is maybe one wave from dying. EG gonna backdoor it. The slow advantage that you accrue when you have an Italy on your team who is hitting his spears is ridiculous. They, they were able to get Dragon from it. They were able to get this mid turret from it. Now they're rotating down bottom. It's already prepped here, and they'll probably just get another one. Just yeah. knocking objective down after objective. That makes it turret number six. The javelins for Pobelter are very strong. 131 minions. About that many javelins land on enemy champions as well. And it's been a massive game for him. Yellow Pete takes down Barry. Going to have the recalls coming in soon. Now looks like EG happy to recall and spend money off of the uh, couple of turrets they just got. And re-up their advantages. Blasting one picked up for Pobelter. Looks like, I want to see where Krepo goes, if he can get the kills for himself. Looks like he can't quite, but he does get Chalice. The Ravenous Hydra, Inox, of course, a very, very fast at killing minion waves. Yuzuki has good damage, he's got a Triforce, but that Lee Sin with Hydra just destroys minion waves in like two seconds. Yeah, and that uh, Mikhail's that you're talking about, Glebe would actually really benefit from one of those too, because EG are running this skill shot based comp that I talked about, they would love to be able to get uh, Aurelia or Evelyn out of the first cocoon that hits. If they can get someone out of this CC that's all based on Krepo and Snoopy's aim, then they have a much higher chance of success in the team fight. Uh, because it looks like Snoopy is going with the Medios inspired cooldown reduction Elise build for those maximum late game two second cocoons. Yeah. He's maxing and E second. As, uh, as we said, this EG team is all about skill shots. They've been landing all of their skill shots, not just Pobelter, uh, but the rest of the team too. 
and they've reaped the reward so far. Let's find out what the next reward is. It's not the vote. It should be 30-10 right now. It's okay. EG definitely winning, mirroring the kills somewhat. And the siege might just continue, actually. Let's see. Oof. Yep. No attempt to dodge. Just trying to outrange it there. Did not happen. Even with the shield, gets annihilated. Okay, so Inox starts the bottling split push again. There's no turrets there in his way until he gets to the inhibitor, but that's fine. Stupi claiming the jungle. Standard EG way right there. They've got the lead. They own the jungle. They start taking camps down. Uh-oh. Kez might have gotten spotted there. Pavelter not showing any fear. Inox coming in from the bottom side as well. Looks like EG Blue won buff the battle. is up and Snoopy is top side. Can C9 T secure one? Yes. yes, they can. So they at least have good wave clear here. They've been able to secure that for Bijou. Also, he will hope to shield some of the damage from the spears. He has not been able to uh, get enough AP to eclipse the damage. But he'll do his best. And a lot of money is going towards Yellow Pete right now. 143 minions on him. He's getting a fair bit of this farm, and the team is together. Of course, Inox at 209 is getting the most by being the dedicated split pusher there, holding up the waves. No binding hits on this one. EG, now look for the top lane. Now, even though EG have been winning for most of the game, and they're in a very good spot right now, they still have to be scared of one successful hard engage from the C9 team. That's all it would really take to turn this around, because they can chain that into a dragon pretty soon, um, or even an answer Baron, depending on how bad that team fight goes. So, also we have to keep our eyes on Krepo. Is he able to get the black shield off quick enough? He lands the binding. All tech down below half HP, tanks the entire puddle right there, but Inox gets caught out, flashes the wall, he keeps himself safe. But look at this top lane is getting pushed down against the turret. They get pushed away, but this inhibitor turret's incredibly low. They commit to Inox and they don't get the kill. Yuzuki still has his flash, though. Goes in, flash away the heal by Krepo Snoopy, knocked up into the air. Yuzuki gonna be afraid of this one. Inox can TP back in after healing. He's got home guards. But that's it. Yeah, he comes in pretty quick and he runs away with sparks under his feet. All right, Dragon is up now, so I would actually expect EG um, to play it safe and return back to that. But it looks like they really want to finish off this inhibitor turret. It kind of nags on you. If you get an inhibitor turret this low and then leave for too long, it will regenerate all the way back up. So they want to finish it now and not let it uh, have a chance for that. But this could cost them. C9T looking for that engage, and they do have um, the Evelyn ulti. No Lulu ulti, though, because that was used in the last one. They didn't know Kez was missing. Kez went to the bottom side to look at Dragon and was like, oh, wait, they're, they're sieging. BRB are recalling. And so EG did not go for the dive 5v4. They back off, look for the mid lane. So they the will play it safer. I think they are making their way towards that Dragon, as I thought. Yeah. Um, Kez, though, one man solo steal. He could pull off a solo steal. We've seen it done on Baron. Still dangerous for him to go for it, though. His team's not too far behind, but EG already starting this one. Cloud and Hip is looking for the mid lane right here. They do, I believe, have some minions. This dragon going down really quickly. Oh, too no late engage. to catch him. I think that they need to shove mid here since they've chased him off. A couple of wards come out, try to block the rotations. EG taking the long way around because there are no wards in that lower jungle. They don't know if there is a trap. C19, get into the mid lane. This is their turret. Yeah, good answer there from C19. Not able to catch them in the Dragon Pit, but they even out the Global Gold and get back in time for the Giant Wave that's up at top lane. Can they drop another ward here around Baron? They only have one ward in there, I think. Yeah, there's not a lot of vision overall. There's really not. That, set, that part of the map hasn't been set up yet. I do want to point out the fact that Red Buff just went to Inox, though, because EG are putting a lot on his shoulders. He is a split pusher. He has to beat Yuzuki in the side lane, level 14 to 13 there. They give him Red Buff to win the duel even harder. See how much Inox can do with this one. Gonna recall back, though. Hmm. He doesn't take the cannon. Doesn't want the wave to get uh, out of control. It will push very, very slowly now. He left that cannon there. Uh, they want to time that wave then with a different objective on the other side of the map. And that would probably signal that they want to make something happen around Baron. 
He kind of left a little time bomb down in that bottom lane by only half clearing the wave. Walter misses those with his javelins. He gets a boo for the one miss javelin on minion. <laughs> wow, these guys are harsh. <laughs> hey, he's hitting champions. You don't need to hit minions. Yes. They're smaller, it's harder. Great mid lane ward coverage, though. So they didn't spend too many of them actually in the Baron pit, but they can see EG walking towards that area of the map. There was a nice move by Alltech, though. He actually got to the bottom lane and stopped that push kind of midway oh, through. Oh, yeah. So he, dis he defused the time bomb that Inox set up. I think it's... Actually, no, he just delayed it. The mini wave uh -oh. is still bigger for EG. He did not cross the blue and the red. He crossed the blue and the yellow. Uh-oh. Well, we'll see, because the waves come in first from C90. That might be enough to tip the wave. I don't know my split push lopsided minion mechanics that well just yet. We'll see which way it goes. Check back later. Don't worry. Dangerous battle here around the Baron Vision. Three pink wards set up in the three places that you need them for EG. And they also have three sweepers ready to go. One of them has actually been even upgraded into the Oracle site, so they've got plenty of vision control. All they need to do is pick somebody. Glee Blarbu taking gigantic Whoa! damage. Has to flash to get away from that one. Wow, stutter step there. Uh, having to burn his flash in the end. All right, so. That's, that's I mean, if that's not the signal to force this Baron bait, then I don't know what is, because now it's four versus five, and they still have this crazy vision. There it is, the Baron bait, and they catch him! Kez gets caught completely, and down he goes from the dark binding from Crapo. Bijou flashes the wall. He's gonna get out. That was the jungler, too. That is basically the best thing that EG could possibly hope for. Now there's no threat of a steal. They can feel confident going for the Baron, and Coast, I mean, uh, Cloud9 have to settle for just a turret shove. All right, some early recalls there. Krepo and Inox gonna leave the Baron area. Cloud9 Tempest push the mid lane down as fast as possible. They get tier two turret for it. Make it up five to six in turrets. The problem is EG are so ahead in the other globals. Dragons and Barons and even kills. That means the blue team has significantly more gold. Cloud9 Tempest setting up a trap in the bottom side. Altec is faking lag right now. The stutter step. Ooh, nice little party waiting for Inox. He's got an invitation. Cues it. Glee puts the team in. Does not take it. Ha ha. He timed his advance with the minion wave being behind him. So if he got caught, he could jump back. You saw him wait. Yeah. Was, that's, that's what he was waiting for. That was awesome. Yes. I like that word. He's played a lot of Lee Sin. Yes, he has. Say that. And he's still checking every bush he passes by. He kicks down the bottom one, too. So Inox there actually buys time for his team to gain position on mid lane as well. Not only did it look cool or awesome, as you said, Freak. Yep. Um, but he also afforded his team more position on this mid lane while staying safe. While staying Safety off. Safety first. Safety first. Altec didn't learn the lesson, though. Puts that one second underneath looking cool. And uh, takes a javelin for it. Push her on the mid lane. Bishu did learn safety in school. That's good. Side pink wars here. Definitely paying off for EG. They do not want Evelyn to flank around behind. C out Kez. And again, the skill shots. This is the skill shots just doing their work. Even when they aren't landing now, they're zoning. Wow, and Glebe nearly gets destroyed by that javelin. He has to back off of this one. Evil Genius is in Ox to make his way back towards Save the mid lane. Oh. Oh. You can't with you can't with Lee Sin anymore. He, well, he, could, it. he could try and fight him off. It's true. <laughs> He could avenge the ward. You're right, he can't save the ward's anymore. Kez is down to half HP, though. These javelins so good from Pobelter. Gonna move in, top lane inhibitor turret, also going to fall. The base just dropping away from C9T. And this Nidalee, was it a fourth pick, I think? Yeah. For EG. It's not like they uh, rushed to this or anything. This, the Morgana was the first thing they locked in. But Nidalee really paying off for them. They go for the engage, three-man uh, ulti doesn't pay off into much. The disengage, the teleport in, Inox wants this, kicks back Kez, he's forced to run away. The slow comes in as well, Lulu tries to save the team. Yuzuki in the front line is forced to go, and he goes down. Now Kez chase, two kills picked up in the fight. Everyone else is low, Evil Genius has owned the base. And EG strike back again. This is an exciting series. Uh... Basically, blue team winning all the games, I guess. Yeah, so far so good for the blue side. Evil Genius is now one Nexus turret away from the game-winning push. Five versus three on the map. 
Taking the time a little bit though, killing minions away, waiting for the next wave. Yeah, this should be the exact same siege, only two members left, so EG can make short work of this Nexus turret. Skill shots don't quite hit, but the Nexus turret's gonna be going down. Here comes the push in for the Nexus, and it's gonna be the game almost for sure at the going down. 30 minutes, and Evil Geniuses are one game away from the North American LCS. They don't look sad this time around, but they're also not celebrating at all. That's the story for these guys. Yeah. No both teams can win games. You've got to take it one at a time. EG came up with a better strategy in game three. Cloud9 Tempest, they've got focus in their faces, not so much smiles. There was no single game-breaking mistake. It was, they had no way of breaking the siege. EG got away.